Welcome to the Clarity 16.1.3 Feature Supportability Training Session. Staffing Workspace Enhancements for Clarity Release 16.1.3 I'm Katherine Ellis, a Product Manager with Clarity. Welcome to this session where you'll learn what's new, why is it important, and how to use the new and improved features. In this release, we're introducing the Hide Empty Groups toggle in response to immediate customer feedback from 16.1.2 when the unstaffed investment and resource groupings cluttered up the results, causing users to lose focus on what data is important. Some companies manage staffing through task assignment estimates rather than using allocations. We're now introducing new tabs where the investment manager or resource manager can now manage their staffing needs by editing the task assignment ETC values. The user can set their personal preferences for the over-under thresholds differently for assignments versus allocations. If your implementation utilizes the team concept, you'll learn in another presentation how teams are upgraded to have a companion team investment. In this presentation, you'll see how important this new concept allows the resource manager to visualize the direct allocations along with team allocations for his group of resources. We've changed the layout of the staffing workspace in this release. The single allocations timeline from 1612 is now split into two new tabs allocations by investment, and allocations by resource. With the new assignments functionality introduced, you'll see two new additional tabs that provide the user with the same capabilities to perform staffing activities along with the ability to focus and edit on the resources task assignment ETC values. Within the user's general settings page, over under thresholds can be set differently for the allocation pages versus the assignment pages. Existing saved views from 1612 allocations timeline were shared between the allocations by investment and allocations by resource. Therefore, after upgrade, these views are copied between both allocation tabs. It will be up to the users to determine which of the existing views are relevant to keep or remove for the different tabs. The assignment tabs are new in this release and will have the default standard view, and therefore users will need to set up some saved views as per their needs. By default, the new Hide Empty Groups toggle is turned on to hide the empty grouping rows. The users can elect to toggle it off at any time, and the state can be saved with a view. When the toggle is on, Grouping rows with no allocation records or no child rows are hidden. These grouping rows are recognized as empty because there is no icon for the user to expand the grouping. For hiding the empty groups where the dates don't fall within the duration of the view option periods, these rows are recognized as empty because you won't see a bar in the timeline bar panel. The use of the Hide Empty Groups toggle does not impact the visibility of the child rows based on dates, and you may see some child rows that won't have data or bars in the timeline. This toggle is present on all four timeline tabs, and users will see an immediate impact after upgrade as the list of grouping rows will be reduced with the toggle on. Comparing these new improvements to the last release of 16.1.2, the Allocations Timeline tabbed page had a button to display the two different layouts, by investment or by resource, and shared the same views. Now that they are separated out into their own tabbed page, the user can set the options and save the views within each page. Two new tabbed pages have been added for managing staffing assignments where the user can focus on managing assignments grouped by investment or grouped by resource. In this release, 16.1.3, covered in a separate presentation, 
the functionality to copy the URL for sharing a specific saved view with other users is included in the staffing workspace. Users can get a view link by clicking the link icon located to the right of the saved view box or the link can be found by going into the manage views and clicking the copy link button in the action column. Within each of the four timeline pages, the resource histogram panel is present. The new hide empty groups toggle is visible and turned on by default. And the columns button has been moved to the right side of the page. The label for the staff grid tab has been renamed to simply staff. No other changes were done on this page. As in previous releases, the last tab page visited by the user will be persisted the next time the user goes into the staffing workspace. Within each of the four timeline pages, the last position of the panel dividers are persisted per page per user. Existing access rights have not changed in this workspace. When the user is granted access to the staffing workspace, all five tabs are visible. When viewing the allocations or assignments grouped by investment, the user will see all the investments for which they have either view or edit access. And when expanding the investment group, they will see all resources staffed to that investment. When viewing the allocations or assignments grouped by resource, the user will see all the resources for which they have either view or edit access. And when expanding the resource group, they will see all investments allocated to the resource. This also applies to the resource histogram section on each of the four tabs. And when launching the modal to edit either allocations or ETCs, all investments are shown based on the filtering or date range. Having the appropriate combination of investment and resource booking permissions allows the user to perform staffing activities. And now in this release with the introduction of the edit assignments modal, the user can edit the ETCs with the task management permissions included in the investment edit or granted as a separate access right. In 16.1.2, you have very limited visibility into a team resource. Only labor resources could be a member of a team resource. The team resource record could be staffed to projects, ideas, and custom investment types. And timesheet entries could be posted for the team resource. However, when looking at staffing, there was no visibility into how much impact the allocation or total usage metrics had on the individual resource member of the team. Team resources can be identified by looking at the Is Team field from the resource object. Now in release 16.1.3, we can get better visibility into resources total allocations, including the allocation membership into a team investment. With the concept of the team investment, there are many benefits for analyzing the team's demand and usage. Just like any other type of investment, per period allocation and usage metrics can be included in the total metrics for an individual resource. The team investment can have a start and finish date and therefore teams can be active for a period of time such as a fiscal year. This can provide better control for future team planning metrics by allocating the people to teams for a finite period of time. Now both labor and non-labor resources and roles can be added to multiple teams with distinct per period metrics within each team. I'll show you how to recognize the difference between the team resource and the team investment for purposes of staffing. This will help you understand how you can leverage this new concept for your planning purposes. Team investments can be identified by looking at the type field from the investment object. To support the new assignments tabs in the staffing workspace, we introduced new TSV per period metric fields for the resource object. In the resources workspace, for resources, roles, or teams, you will now see three new fields for actuals, ETC, and total usage. The labels on existing fields are updated to reflect common names for the same fields across different workspaces. 
Upon upgrade, the allocations timeline has been split into two new tabs, allocations by investment and allocations by resource. In the prior release, because both layouts shared the same page, the views were shared. Now, after upgrade, the existing saved views from the prior release were copied to both allocation tabs. From this page, the user sees the allocations grouped by investment and with the change in perpetual teams, the user will see projects, ideas, custom investments, and team investment groupings. The new Hide Empty Groups toggle is visible and enabled by default. As a review, I'll go over the existing functionality which remains the same for both allocation tabs. From the timeline panel on the right, the numbers in the periods represent the planned soft allocations or hard allocations or both with colors determined by the over under allocation threshold setting. From a child row, double click into one of the timeline periods to open the edit allocations modal. The actions from the timeline column panel using the right click context menu allows the user to add staff to the investment grouping. Expanding the investment grouping and using the right-click context menu from the child rows allows the user to delete the allocation row or to reallocate the amounts by changing the percentage or date range. The edit allocations modal can also be opened from the columns panel using the right-click context menu to allow the user to edit the per period allocation amounts. The details flyout also allows the user to replace a staff member using the resource field from the staff object. When opening the details flyout for a team resource, the staff tab appears and the user can see the list of staff members for that team. The resource histogram below provides the list of resources, roles, and team resources total allocation metrics. The Edit Allocations modal for a resource can be launched from the Columns Panel right-click action or by double-clicking into a Timeline Period cell for that resource. The ability to use the drag-and-drop from the histogram up to the investment grouping will add the resource to the investment or by dragging a resource up to an existing child row will replace the existing resource with the selected resource. In the new Allocations by Resource tab, the Hide Empty Groups toggle is visible and enabled by default. The user will have the ability to manage the allocations per period, just as noted in the Allocations by Investment tab, but with the focus on resources. From both tabs, in addition to the staffing activities I just described, to add, remove, and edit allocations, the user can filter by a variety of fields from the staffing object, the resource object, and the different investment objects. The resource histogram compares the resources allocation amounts to their availability and provides a color based on the over-under color threshold. On the resource histogram for any of the tabs, you can filter for your favorite resources. In the top timeline panel, the two tabs grouped by resource, the resource-specific starred records can also be filtered to show your favorite resources. On the other two tabs where the data is grouped by investments, the user can filter for their favorite investments using the starred field. The third and fourth tabs new in this release introduce the capability for the user to view and edit assignment estimates, or ETC, for allocated staff members using the Edit Assignments modal. Within this new tab, you can add or delete staff members for an investment in addition to managing the assignments per period amounts. The main difference between the Allocation tabs and the Assignment tabs are the numbers shown in the Timeline periods and the Histogram periods. Here we have the ability to show Actuals, ETC Estimates, and Total Usage. Similar to the allocations by investment, the actions on the left side of the page using the right-click context menu allows the user to add staff to the investment grouping. Expanding the grouping and using the right-click context menu from the child rows allows the user to edit the staff row or reallocate the amounts by changing the percentage or date range. The difference is in the Edit Assignments modal 
which provides the user with the ability to edit the per period ETC amounts. The resource histogram below provides the list of resources, roles, and team resources total usage metrics compared to their total availability and provides a color based on the over under color assignments threshold, a separate setting from the allocations threshold. And here is the new Assignments by Resource tab. This has the same functionality as described within the Assignments by Investment tab, but provides the user with the focus by resource role or team resource for editing the assignments. When I go through the demonstration, you'll see two different formats for the data presented in the Edit Assignments modal. The user will have the opportunity to view assignments for multiple investments or to narrowly focus on the assignments for one investment depending on where the modal is launched from. When launching the Edit Assignments modal from the Assignments by Investment timeline or from the resource histogram used on both assignment tabs, the first format is used. However, when the Assignments by Resource tab, both formats are available. The second format will appear when launching the modal from the child record because this is showing the task assignments for that resource of a specific investment. As a reminder, with all four tabs, if you're making entries in the modal for either allocations or task assignments, the entries may have an impact on the dates of the tasks or of the investment, causing the duration to be extended. In this demonstration, You'll see how to use the Hide Empty Groups toggle, set thresholds for assignments, use the Assignments by Investment tab, use the Assignments by Resource tab, and understand the difference and manage staffing for team resources versus team investments. In this demonstration, you'll see how to use the Hide Empty Groups toggle. Let's take a look at the Hide Empty Groups functionality. We've landed on an existing saved view which existed prior to the upgrade. Let's maximize the timeline. By default, the Hide Empty Groups toggle is enabled when visiting any pre-existing saved view that was upgraded. The list of items is only showing us relevant data for investments that are staffed or has allocations that fall within the duration of these periods shown on this page. If we switch to any other views that were upgraded, the behavior is the same. The toggle is enabled by default. What is the definition of an empty group? I have created a new view whereby I intentionally set the toggle off and saved it as a new view. As you can see, this list of investments is quite long because it includes all investments that match this filtering criteria plus any unstaffed investments. On the right, you'll see some blank periods with no bars showing. If you look at the date range on the investments in the first two rows, you'll see the investments finish in June and our periods start in July. They are staffed and have allocations, but because they don't fall within the duration of the periods shown, these two investments are considered empty grouping rows. The other type of empty groups are rows where the investment is not staffed. No allocation records are on the investment. This is indicated by the Has Staff field or by looking to see if there's an arrow to expand the grouping. Now I'll open another saved view I created for which it has the same filters and I intentionally saved it with the toggle on. Now the list is shortened because the empty grouping rows are removed from the view. Now with the implementation of the Hide Empty Groups toggle, with each of the timeline pages, you can clearly focus on the relevant staffing data for managing allocations and assignments. In this demonstration, you'll see how to set the thresholds for the assignments pages in the staffing workspace. In this demonstration, we'll take a look at how to set the over-under thresholds for the new assignments pages. As a review of the existing behavior for allocations, you can see the colors here are represented by the allocation threshold settings. Currently, Ray is using the default setting for 10% over and 30% under for red and green. 
Gray represents anything that is less than 10% over-allocated or anything less than 30% under-allocated. For example, Cheryl's about 80% allocated in the month of July, which is about 20% under-allocated. The threshold settings are accessed by navigating to the Avatar Settings General page. On the left are the options to set the over-under threshold for the allocations. When this configuration is applied, the staffing workspace will reflect the colors based on the total allocation as compared with the resources availability. On the right are the new options to set the over-under threshold for the new assignments pages. The colors applied to these pages are based on the total usage, which is the sum of the total actuals, plus ETC assignment estimates, as compared with the resources total availability. Here we can set the thresholds differently for assignments versus allocations. As each change is made, the staffing pages behind the modal are being refreshed with the new settings. On the Allocations by Investment page, the data is grouped by investment. You won't see colors on the top grouping row, but when you expand it, you see the colors are showing to reflect the color indicator based for the resource of their total allocations over the availability per period. Here you see a row for Cheryl with an allocation amount related to this investment, by which itself does not cause an overallocation. When you focus on the resource histogram and view Cheryl's totals, the colors match because the colors up in the timeline represent the total over under allocation indicator. Take note of Cheryl's colorization here on the histogram. The month of July is gray and the month of September is red. Ian's colors are gray for May and June. Let's compare this to the Assignments by Investment view, for which I have created a save view with similar configuration to show these resources. The Assignments threshold setting is applied and immediately when you look at Cheryl and Ian's data, the over-under colorization is different for the same investment and the same periods. This is because we're now looking at the total usage over their total availability. On the Allocations by Resource page, the data is grouped by resource. You'll see a color on the grouping row, aggregated up from the child rows within that grouping. When you expand the resource grouping row, there's no colors for the individual rows. Here the view options are set to show planned or soft allocation numbers. If we change the view options to show hard allocations, the colors will apply to these numbers. Here you can see the colors change for Cheryl as she has some hard allocations. Let's change the configuration to show both allocation and hard allocation. The colors are now applied to both data points for the total allocations over total availability per period. Using filtering in the timeline, when you're grouping by resource, causes the resource grouping row to change colors based on the aggregated data for that resource. Let's filter to reduce the list of investments for Cheryl and see how the numbers and colors change. The colors on the timeline now represent the total allocation or hard allocation as compared to the total availability. Now let's look at the assignments by resource page. The assignments threshold settings are applied and immediately the colorization is different from the allocations by resource page. All the same activities can be done on this page and you, when using filtering, you can cause the resource grouping row to change colors based on the aggregated data for that resource. In this demonstration, you'll see how to use the Assignments by Investment Staffing Workspace. Within the Assignments by Investment workspace, you can see allocated resources, roles, and teams grouped by investments to view actuals, ETCs, and total usage. There are similarities and differences between this page and the Allocations by Investment page. From both pages, the user can manage staffing activities, but the main difference on this page is the ability to view and edit assignments. Looking at the right side of the timeline and histogram, the number shown by default is the total usage amount, which is the total actuals plus total ETCs per period. The user will have the ability to change the view options for the timeline to select any combination of the three fields or show none at all. 
It doesn't matter the order in which the fields are selected. When the fields are added to the view, they appear in a prescribed order, actuals, ETC, and total usage. From the investment grouping row, the user can add staff. Expanding the grouping allows the user to perform some allocation actions, such as reallocating the resource or deleting the allocations, along with the ability to edit assignments. Launching the Edit Assignments modal from here brings up a list of tasks assigned to this resource for this specific investment only. The user can then edit the assignment ETC values across different tasks. Using a double-click action directly into one of the timeline cells will also launch the Edit Assignments modal. When the user opens the details flyout from this row, it shows the details of the staffing allocation properties along with the conversations tab. Using the resource field on the flyout provides the user with a quick method to perform a staff replacement. The user also has the ability to drag and drop one of the resources from the histogram up to this child allocation row to perform a staff replacement. When doing a staff replacement action, Using drag and drop or through the resource field on the details flyout, all current task assignments are replaced with the selected resource role or team if the administration project management settings are enabled to reassign tasks when replacing a role. Looking to the right on the resource histogram, the numbers represented here always show the total usage versus availability regardless of the view options setting for the timeline. The modal can be launched using the right-click action for the resource row or by double-clicking into a specific period on the histogram. When the modal opens, all assigned tasks appear for each investment. The user can then manage the task assignments across investments. One note to remember is that when entering values for task assignments, Task dates may be impacted depending on the duration of the periods where the data is entered. This is the same behavior that can occur on Assignments module when managing ETC values for assignments. In this demonstration, you'll see how to use the Assignments by Resource page in the Staffing Workspace. On the Assignments by Resource page, we can perform the staffing activities available on the other timeline pages. When grouped by resource, the right-click action on the grouping row allows the user to allocate an investment to the resource. Expanding the resource grouping reveals the list of allocated investments for which the user can perform staffing activities, such as reallocate or delete. Launching the Edit Assignments modal from the resource's Investment Allocation row allows the user to edit the task ETCs if there are assignments for that investment. Let's open the list of tasks for another investment. The list of assigned tasks for this specific investment are shown. And let's do the same for this third investment, for Jason Barry. You can see the list of tasks are shown. A unique option on this page is the ability to double-click into a period on the resource grouping row to bring up the modal with a list of all investments with assignments for this resource. As described for the Assignments by Investment page, the resource histogram on this page allows the user to open the Edit Assignments modal for all associated investments that have the assignments. In this demonstration, you'll see the difference between the team resources and the team investments with respect to how you can utilize them in the staffing workspace. In this demonstration, I'll show you the difference between the team resource and the new team investment types. In the last release, you only had the ability to look at a team resource, and that team resource was allocated to investments. And so you were able to see those through the allocations by resource and through the resource histogram. 
Let's direct our attention towards the resource histogram first. Here you're looking at all of the resource records. We've filtered this list for is team equals yes. This gives us all of the teams for which we have access to and you can see what investments this each team resource is allocated to. When we open up the modal, you can see the investments for which this team resource is allocated to. You can also see that the resources are starred, and you can see that on the resource workspace. This is the list of the team resource records, and I have starred the resource record, and you can see that information here. Going back into the staffing, you can look at this resource histogram information on all of the four tabs. They are not shared, so you would have to set up the filter for each tab depending on what you want to see. Let's now redirect our attention up to the top panel for the timeline. In either allocation by resource or assignment by resource, the top grouping row is from the resource record. Here you can see that we have a list of teams and it looks a little bit shorter because we're hiding empty groups. When we expand this to show all the teams, we'll include the ones that are not staffed and include the ones that might fall outside of a different time range. We can star the individual resources here as well but we can't do it on the uh, resource histogram. However, if we restore the tab, once we have starred this M&A one, you can see that it has been starred here as well. And when we go back to the uh, team resource list, you'll see it is updated here as well. So you can update the starred for the resource record from the resource workspace or from the grouping by resource timeline. The histogram does not allow you to edit, uncheck and check it, but you can do it from the top. Now let's take a look at the allocation records, or in the case if you were on the assignment tab, we would look at the assignment records. When you're on the row for the mobile team resource that's been allocated to an investment, and you open the details flyout, you can see a subtab called Staff. This Staff tab gives you a list of all the members of that team, and this is what you saw in the prior release as well. Now if we go to the Allocations by Investment, and we want to see the flip of the team resources that have been allocated, you can see them here. We have a list of investments you can see, and my filter is this, using the same filter I've used on the other side, which is filtering by the resource field called is team equals yes. We saw that when we were looking at the mobile team resource, it was allocated to the investment called B2B value stream. If I open this up, I will see all of the team investments that have been allocated to this investment. And if I click here and open up the details panel, I see all the staff members. And you can see that the staff type is team. This is a team resource on a, a custom investment type called B2B Value Stream. And this is what you could see in the prior releases. The other thing that you couldn't do in the prior release was get a full picture by resource of, of what teams the people were allocated to. So up until this point, I would not be able to know if Cheryl was only on this one team or if she was on other teams very easily but we can now find that information. We'll now change our 
filter so that we're filtering by a different investment type. So you know that we have projects, ideas, objectives, and custom investment types. And now we have the new team investment types. And if you visit the team investment workspace, you can create different objects with different types of teams. If you're an upgraded system, you'll and you were using Teams prior, you'll see this Team Investment tile and have a list of your investments here. We see the mobile team is listed here and all of the other teams that we had prior to upgrade have been now converted and copied into a team investment with all the staff members. And we go and look at the mobile team and you can see that this is an investment. It has staff and it has all of our staff members. Now let's see how that looks in Staffy. We'll change our filter so that now we'll filter for the different team types. And remove this filter. And we see now it looks like a list of team resources, but this is actually a list of the team investments. And we can see the different types of team investments we have. If we unhide the empty groups, we can see that this list matches the list from the resource histogram. Now the one thing that you'll notice right away is the Jaguars team is starred on this layout and this is because we have starred the Jaguar team investment record. We didn't uh, star the Jaguar team resource record but we did do the resource records for the M&A and mobile team. So we can look at that and let's go into the team investment and compare. Here you can see the Jaguar team investment is starred. We can star another one as well. And when we return to the staffing page grouped by investment, we see that the investment is starred. So the difference between starring by investment is it will go from the investment star or if you're looking at grouping by resource, it'll go from the resource record, what is starred. Now, the difference uh, that we want to show when expanding the list of the team is when you were looking at it from the team resource, you saw all of the investments for which that team resource was allocated. Well, now, you know when you open up an investment and you look at all the child records, you're actually looking at who the staffed members are on that investment, who are resources, roles, or teams. And since we're looking at a team investment, you can only have resources and roles, and we see these are the people that are staffed into this team investment. When we right-click and open the details, you can see that there is no a staff subtab to show the list of team members because this is the record for Cheryl Amos. This is her resource allocation record. Now that you understand that a team can be an investment, the benefit of having it in staffing, if you're using a hybrid model of allocating people directly to some investments and also allocating them to a team is you can see that mix now for their total allocations. Let's go back into the allocations by resource and change our view so that we can pick Cheryl Amos. And we'll look at her information in the histogram. We're showing all of her investments that she's allocated to. So you can see them here. 
You can also see them when you look at it uh, opening up the modal. And what I want to point out is that you can see she's allocated to an investment called Mobile Team. This is really great because you can see her total allocation across individual investments and also within a team. If you didn't want to see her allocation into a team, you can do it from the top panel. The bottom panel will always show all investment that she's allocated to, but the top one will filter it out when you open the modal. So let's filter out uh, here. Let's uh, filter by the common investment type and say is not equal to the team investment. And when we expand, we don't see the mobile team investment anymore. And if we were to edit allocations, you don't see the mobile team listed. So you can look at Cheryl's information from the top by filtering out those items you don't want to see, and it'll give you an over-under uh, based on the filtering. However, if you did want to see her full allocation, you go to the bottom, open up the edit allocations, and you see the full list of the investments for which she is allocated, which includes the team investment. And you can see that she is over allocated because she is 100% uh, uh, for this process audit one and also for the mobile team during some of these months. The main point to take home is that you now have the ability to see the uh, teams for which individual resources are booked on, and you can look at that with respect to whether they're over or allo under allocated. This concludes the demonstration and illustration between the team resources and team investments. Thank you for your time and attention. I know this information will be valuable to you when using the new enhancements to the staffing workspace.